So this video is the follow-up of a previous video. I will put the link below of the previous video. It was about an article or more exactly an interview uh, made in uh, February 1986. I don't have the name of the journalist but it's written vinyl to um, 2nd of February 1986. And the interview was mostly about the influence, the musical influence on Marcolis and for the album uh, The Color of Spring. In my previous video, I, I mainly explained uh, how the classical music influenced a lot uh, the Color of Spring album. But originally, when I read uh, this interview, it was because I was interested about the image which come from the music because I'm a, an artist, a painter, I don't know if you watched my videos before so maybe you don't know, I paint, I paint a lot on music. Uh, the music is what what inspires me the most to paint and if I don't have music good enough to inspire me I'm often stuck, I'm, I'm not able to paint, that, that's a problem. Anyway, I've been painting about Tok Tok and Marcolis lately and my next uh, painting will be about the song Tomorrow Started which is on the It's My Life album. I have a lot, really a lot of images when I listen to this song. It's not automatically related to the lyrics. Sometimes there are songs where the lyrics come uh, first and the images which appear to me are completely related to the lyrics. I'm thinking, for example, of the song uh, Have You Heard the News, which is on the, the parties over the first album by Tok Tok. I never heard this song uh, before, I mean in 30 years ago or 32 years ago. I, I didn't hear this song, so I discovered it lately. And the first time that I listened to it, I first paid attention mostly to the music because there is something very captivating and um, hypnotic in this song. But then I wanted to go a little further and I started listening to the lyrics and even reading them and right away the, the images which came to me were the ones of the lyrics. It's like almost like a film, almost like if we can see the action, you know, uh, what Marcolis is describing, it's exactly that. And it's interesting because it works like that for this song, but for Tomorrow Started, um, Marcolis is speaking of something and I understand something which is maybe not the same thing as what Marcolis is saying. <laughs> But the images which come to my mind have nothing to do with the lyrics. Uh, no, I can't say that. There is something to do with the lyrics. But actually the images which came were not especially related to the lyrics. But after explaining the images, I realized that it had a link with the lyrics. But it was not purposely oriented to the lyrics. No, I don't think so. So in this article, that's why I was um, interested in this article, because what was saying Marcolis, the journalist says, do you always have images in your head of how you feel a song works? And Marcolis answers, oh yeah, that's that is the essence of every good song. There must be an underlying image 
and it should evoke images. So if for him it's a good song when a song evokes images, he is really writing very good songs because I think there is no one song by Tok Tok or even by Marcolis where I don't have images by listening to them. I was wondering, obviously I'm not the only one to be like that, since Marcolis is talking about it, it means that at least it happens to him. But I was wondering if you are watching my video right now, does it happen to you too when you listen to a song or music or something you like? Do you see images in your mind? I, I would like to know. If someone has the kindness to answer me, please feel free to put your comments. I will be glad to read them and to answer if necessary. So it's very funny because today I sent a message uh, to a friend on Facebook uh, who knows uh, Talk Talk music really well and I asked him in the song Tomorrow Started uh, on internet you find different lyrics. There are lyrics where it's written a line so openly alive and on other websites it's written a line so openly a lie. When I listened to Marcolis on stage uh, singing this song I can hear a line so openly a lie. But you know sometimes you hear uh, lyrics and you think you understood what the person says and actually you didn't and he says something different. So I asked my friend, do you know exactly what the lyrics are? Is it a lie or is it alive? And he answered, you should know what it is. The song speaks of lies. So, of course, it is a lie. But another friend came in the conversation and said, no, actually, when you read the lyrics written by hand, by Marcolis, the both are written, a lie and alive. And, you know, my first friend understood this song as if Marcolis was speaking of a lie, of lying, and actually he speaks of lying. See my eyes, tell me I'm not lying. I'm just the first that you take. All the reasons everybody He says also in the song, uh, see my eyes, tell me I'm not lying. So lying, telling a lie, lying, lying on the floor. And you know, every time I sing this song, I, I sing, tell me I'm not dying. So it could be an, another meaning, even if Marcolis says lying. Um, in Cockney, sometimes you use one word to say another one, just you take another a word but which uh, finishes by the same way and um, maybe he wanted to say dying instead of lying a lot of meanings possible in this song so i think that this song speaks of lying probably of lies but also i think it's speaking about the obsolescence of life so, in that case, if it's the obsolescence of life, the word alive wouldn't be inappropriate in this song. So, 
I wanted to know what was the right words, the right lyrics, because not because I'm going to use this sentence to put it, uh, I mean to use the image of this sentence to put it on my canvas, no, it's just because I wanted to create a line on my canvas where it would be written a line so openly alive, but it would be written but it would create a line. But I didn't want to make a mistake on my sentence. So finally I can put er anything I want because he wrote the both. So we can do the both. Uh, we, can we can even sing the both if we want. And it, it's his handwriting, so we are sure that he created these lyrics that way. What is that? Oh, okay, now my cat is... <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is something. <laughs> he wants to play. You want to play. I'm sorry. I'm doing a video about paintings and music. A mouse is so much more interesting. In this article, I found something interesting about the words. The journalist says, you work a long time on your words. Does it cost you a lot of trouble to get something on paper that doesn't irritate you? So Marcolis answers, in fact, everything you need to do is follow different ideas simul simultaneously. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce well. But I always found it very difficult. So, if he follows different ideas in the same time, maybe in this song the both ideas are there. In, I mean, it's about lies, but it's also about the obsolescence of life. That's why he was hesitating between a lie and a live. Uh, because which direction to take? So this subject was especially interesting me now because I'm starting a painting about that and I realized that I was not automatically painting about the lyrics but the lyrics are still important because somehow the images that we see in our mind end up having a relation with the lyrics. I don't know how it happens, but it's like that. I, I, I built my images since a very long time ago because the first time I heard this song, it was more than 30 years ago now. And I already had, uh, I would say, 80% of the images that I still have now. I already had them. And when I decided to put on paper or, or to talk about it in a video, because I already made videos about this uh, specific painting and song, I realized that the images that I had had somehow a relation with the lyrics. Not completely, probably by my own way. I'm certain that the images I'm going to put on this painting, Marcolis probably would have never thought um, of associating these images with his song. But it's my translation of the song, of the music, with the touch of the lyrics, I would say. They never seem to be and uh, obviously, he, he tries to create uh, images in the mind of the audience. So he succeeded. Obviously, he succeeded because uh, I, I think that um, the talk-talk music 
and the Mark Hollis music, his solo album, is full of images you can't imagine. For example, the song um, Inside Looking Out. Wow, the image is so strong that it's like if I was watching a film. It's not only an image, it's a film that I see. It's a, I, I see a movement, a lot, a lot of water. There is a lot of water in the Marcolis album. And not only because the song is named uh, Watershed, Actually, there is a lot of water in Laughing Stock too, because uh, after the flood, you know. Uh, but in the Marcolis album, I see some water almost everywhere. So I'm wondering how how a composer manages to create music which evokes images. You do a film, of course, you, you put some images. You choose a music which sticks with the images. Uh, like, for example, for the clip video, Life's What You Make It. Uh, they didn't want to, to make a clip video on the song. They wanted the song to be the soundtrack of the video, like in a film. They made their video and they they have partly redone the the music to 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 be perfect on the images. So in a film, of course, you you see the images. There are images, but when you have just music, you have the lyrics, of course, which create images. But sometimes the images don't come from the lyrics; they come from the music. How do they do that? They never seem to be If someone can explain me that, if some one of you composes music and can explain me that, I, I find that fascinating and it's not always the case sometimes I listen to a music that I like but there is no images there is nothing there is just the music or maybe the memories that I will have with this music so I will link the music with the period when I was listening to it for example uh, before listening again to talk talk I was listening to the last album by Daft Punk, um, which is very joyful and you want to dance on it, but it evokes no images at all to me, nothing. I, I love this album, it's great it, and it's really joyful and well done, but it didn't bring images to me and Nothing, no imagination at all, which would, would have helped me to paint again. And I started painting again after nine years of nothing um, because of the images coming from the Tok Tok music. It's crazy. So obviously it's not an accident. He does that purposely. He's saying it in this article. That's why I wanted to talk about it, because that is amazing it's amazing they never seem to be it's he's I, I would say he's almost even more genius than i thought because he manages to do something really hard to do it's it's, it's not obvious uh, not everybody is able to do that. It's just and um, okay, maybe I'm going to stop here. It's a, a little complicated subject.
I, I hope that in, interested you. I find that fascinating, of course, because I love music and I love painting and I love lyrics and I love images and I love the links there are between the three, uh, I mean, the words, music, painting, uh, images, all that is linked in my mind. Everything goes together. If I was able to play an instrument of music and composing uh, songs, I think that I would never stop because I would like to paint and compose and, and write and... <laughs> wow! That would be a little too much. Anyway, so um, and my next video will probably be my artwork. We have some French music uh, because it's a soon Basti day. But, of course, I will continue uh, my researches and my work on um, Tok Tok. Hopefully, I will have started my painting and I will be able to show you little by little what I'm doing. And anyway, I have so many ideas more. I always have something to say when it's about Marcolis or Tok Tok. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching me. See you soon. Bye bye.